Book 1, Proposition 7 of Euclid's Elements, basically focuses on the modern-day side-side-side theorem. So, given two straight lines constructed on a straight line and meeting at a point, there cannot be constructed on the same straight line and on the same side of it two other straight lines meeting in another point and equal to the other two respectively namely each to that which has the same extremity with it. And if you haven't seen the word extremity before, it's essentially just a point. So what this is saying is that if we have a triangle where the base is AB and we have these two lines coming off of it, AC and CB, that these two lines can only meet in one point. Or in other words, that these two lines would not be able to meet at some other point, say D here. So the way that Euclid was able to prove that these three different lengths form a unique triangle was by using a proof by contradiction. So what we can do is assume that these two lines do meet in another point. So let's draw that and we can call that point, point D. So once we assume that these two lengths can meet at some other point, we can then show that this assumption leads to some type of logical contradiction. So the first thing we wanna do is to connect these two lines, C and D. And we can do that because of postulate number one, which says that we can draw a straight line between any two points. And now that we have this drawn, notice we have a triangle that forms between A, C, and D. And we already know that the lines A, C, and A, D are equal to each other. So this and this are equal. And because of book one, proposition five, we know that in a triangle, if two sides are equal, then the angles at the base are equal. So this angle here and this angle here are equal to each other. So let's write that down. That angle ACD is equal to angle ADC. And here we can notice a couple obvious things, such that this angle ADC must be bigger than this angle here, this small angle. Since we know that ADC is equal to this big angle, it has to be bigger than just a part of that angle. So let's say that, that angle ADC is bigger than angle DCB. And we can also notice that this angle ADC has to be smaller than this angle CDB. So angle BDC is bigger than angle ADC. And since BDC is bigger than ADC and ADC is bigger than DCB, then we can conclude that angle BDC must be much bigger than angle DCB. And now that we've established this fact, we can notice that B, D, and C form a triangle where this side and this side are equal to each other, which means that the base angles have to be equal to each other. But notice that the base angles are this DCB and this BDC here. And due to book one, proposition five, since these two sides are equal, we know the base angles are equal. So what we've just concluded from that coming from book one, proposition five, is that angle BDC must equal angle DCB. But we just showed that BDC has to be much bigger than DCB. So obviously both of these things can't come true at the same time, and we can conclude from this that we have a logical contradiction. We can't have both of these. And because of that contradiction, we know that our original assumption that when we have these two straight lines coming off of the base AB, that they can meet at multiple points, that assumption is wrong. And we can only conclude that when you have these two unique lengths, AC and BC, 
that there's only one point that they can meet at, this point here, C. And that finishes our proof. So we can end it with Q, E, D.